Hi, um, I'm here today at the Open, research, Open Educational Resources um, to discuss the MOOC, um, the Massive on Open Online course that we did for the New Cotton Project. I think it's a good start for you to understand a little bit of what we've done. So, hi, again. Um, this is the website, so if you want to open it on another tab and start checking it and going around it, by all means, um, the, you can go access it by the link is circulartextiles.alto.fi, and that's how you get there. About me. So, I am a researcher. Um, I'm currently literally moving from um, the Aalto University to the School of Applied, um, University of Applied Sciences of Utrecht. And, but I did my PhD in Manchester back in, I finished in 2017. And the theme of my PhD was consumer involvement in the development of new sustainable products. Very broad, right? So basically what the idea was to look into the current consumer awareness about sustainability and how about understanding of how a product can be developed and how they can participate in it and the future consumers. And so the idea of um, the sense of global citizenship, which started with this game, that was a partnership um, between the University of Manchester and the Museum of Science and Industry. Um, and they were trying to, they were trying to make material science more interesting. And we came up with this battle of the materials. And it was nice and fun. And the experience kind of introduced me to the STEM network, and which is stands for science, technology, engineering, and maths. And the idea is to make children also interested for the, about these topics, even if they're not necessarily considering a career in engineering. So um, not everybody is naturally in, in love with the sciences, the more stiff side of sciences. So we started with this game and eventually for my PhD, we came up with a bigger um, cross-curricular um, program for children um, from 11 to 16. So in the UK, it would be from high school to college or around college. And we did I did this with Francesca Ratto and Catherine, Catherine Downey, who were colleagues of mine either on my master's or on my PhD. And the idea was to start educating children about sustainability using clothing as this binding element, because that is something that children might understand quite well. Everybody gets dressed in the morning, they have uniforms, they've seen they've been wearing clothes for such a long time so it's not as technical or as formal as it would be if it was with um, cars or any other industry really so we came up with this and it wasn't as successful as we wanted but it worked we did apply a little bit not perfect but then it got to the fact that I had the consumers who were aware or weren't aware and the children who would be in starting looking into the idea of sustainability and so on. So when we're looking, going back to nowadays, to the current project, um, it's very simple. Have you ever thought of how recyclable your clothes are? And this comes, think, of, think, it, think about it to yourself. Have you ever thought if your clothes, if your garments, whatever you're wearing now, if it is recyclable? Um, thinking of that, we have the new cotton project 
And this is a big project sponsored by the Horizon 2020 program from the European Union. It has 12 companies engaged. And the idea was to develop a working ecosystem where the, the raw material would come from post-consumer textile waste. So it would come from garments that have already been worn and would become a new fiber. So this is what the new cotton proposed. This is the partners. And as you can see here, we have Adidas and H&M, which are two big, partner, big industrial partners To uh, Most of them are industrial, not all, but these are two, two brands that do have direct contact with the consumer. And we came up with some things and also we had struggles with other things. So for instance, um, when you think of your what you're wearing, right? So I put this hoodie here and usually you think, okay, so my hoodie is made of cotton and if it's made of, if the body of it is made of cotton, everything is cotton. But if you think about the person who needs to separate the pieces, this person is going to have to take out the string. If the string, if in the end is just not, is one thing, but if it is like this case that you see this plastic end, then she needs to cut off that plastic end. If the every if the sewing is done with a, another kind of material, which usually is very often is polyester that you use for sewing, then that also needs to be cut out and separated from a product that is, if in this case, because we wanted to have high cellulose content and it needed to be at least one pure material, if that makes sense. So because of the process, and I'm not going to go into details here, because of the process, we needed to have a selection of garments which would be um, which would be cleared from all of the things that are not cotton or cellulose based. And so when you start thinking about a garment, you start thinking of, okay, so the 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 sleeves were made knitted. Great. Um, how about this the borders or the the trims, these bits, actually? Are they made also of cotton? Because sometimes they have elastic. If they have elastic, this means that somebody is going to have to go, cut it off, and separate. So we're going to have a byproduct that is not able to go into the product that we are proposing. So it's not something that we would be able to recycle and create new products from. So, so far, so good. So then we were thinking about, great, we're going to do something super cool. So it's like recycling some garments, creating new garments out of them. But how much of this is going to actually reach all of our stakeholders? Are the consumers going to understand it? Who is going to understand it? So then we started approaching this idea of invisibility of the project and the ecosystem building. So just a quick overview of what was here. And um, the idea of systems thinking is where you start. So you have linear production models, which tend to be, you do one thing, everything from um, the next step takes some of the material, the next step takes some, and you have waste that is just disposed of. When you start looking into a systemic production model, we start looking into how can we integrate this waste back into my production? Very simple. Then this is started coming into what we now know as circular economy, which proposes that in one, in one production system, everything that goes in is going to be somehow reintroduced into the same cycle, okay? 
So when we're talking about an ecosystem, we need to think of what is the ecosystem. Um, so in the case, we learn, everybody learned at school, in science classes, when you were very young. So that's a guaranteed thing that ecosystems are this um, combination of animals and plants in a specific area. And they exist in a sense of balance, right? So they have, you have, for instance, if, oh, I like to give you the example of the Everglades, just because it's a very specific environment. So the Everglades existed for a long time. It's a huge river that is flooded. Pretty much that's a very simple explanation, but it is. Um, if an animal dies in the Everglades, you have the little birds or the fish or the insects that are going to consume the all of it. And what is not consumed is going to become fertilizer on the soil. That is going to help the plants grow and the plants are going to give you food for the other, for the other species and so on. So a balanced ecosystem involves this idea of not having any waste. Everything that is seen as waste by some animal might be used by another and so on. So when we're looking into the, the textile ecosystem, we look into this. You have your sources of raw material, you collect it, you make you, you make the fibers, you start, you can send it for yarn production or for fabric production. Um, eventually these are going to be finished. And this finished, the finishes in this case mean when they are dyed or something like that. Uh, you're going to put them, use them into clothes. These clothes are going to go to retail and wholesale, and eventually they're going to be used. When we talk about the ecosystem of this linear, so you see that those things stayed here. You start thinking about what are products, which products can come out of this, and which are the outputs. So in this case, this is mapping out very much in a lot of details. This is exactly that. So how, how are my, which products I can have from yarn production or from the finishes and so on, but also what are the wastes or the outputs that come out of it? So in this initial stage, we started looking at it in order for us to start thinking about the circular ecosystem, which means how could we keep all of these all of these activities and functions in such a way that it itself balances. So thinking again on the ecosystem thing. And then so if I have, for instance, um, the reverse, we're going to reverse cycle close right so this is going to become my raw material therefore i have no need for fossil base or livestock or even agriculture which doesn't sound like something sustainably aggressive but if you think of the amount of water cotton consumes it's a lot so it's not i'm not saying that don't wear cotton i'm just saying that the these industries have this added weight to it and in the new cotton, we're trying to delete that. So instead of using any of these traditional raw materials, we actually use clothes that have been worn. Um, you can start looking into, for instance, what comes out of the prints or of the colors and how this can be used either by the same partner or a different partner within the ecosystem. So that's the idea of closing it. The MOOC came then as a way to look into what's behind the pieces of garments, so behind our collections. And so in a way is behind the, the shopping windows, the shop windows. So very simple. There was, the, uh, the project proposes a development of, st of stakeholder platforms um, in work package six. This is what the auto was responsible for. And the main, the 
the main objective of it all was to build expertise towards circular ecosystems. How do we do that? The new, the circular textiles dot auto dot fee is based, is composed by two fronts. One is about the circular ecosystem and the course is called Interactive Ecosystem for Circular Textiles, the new cotton case, the new cotton project case. And there you have three main flows. So if you go to the website, you're going to see that these are all live and they, you can see the idea here is to show what is traditionally done, how the new cotton deals with it, and then how is this going to be better or how this, how, what is the difference between what is done? So the first is the material flow. So we're looking exactly into the material. So here, how the fibers go from the post-consumer textile waste into becoming shredded fibers, into becoming a mono material that can become then this new fiber. The other, the second material flow, the second flow is of knowledge because if you don't know how something works, it's really hard for you to understand how it can be changed or perfected. So here we present the ways how, how our companies do things nowadays. So you can see videos, you can see PowerPoint presentations where they explain how this, the production works. Thinking of the knowledge, so how, what do they do and how what they do works well. And then finally, we have the ecosystemic flow, which looks into this, the details of these changes. So you have three main areas, which is post-return, manufacture, and design considerations. You can see videos on this. And then you have what happens to this material, to the to whatever was inside these parts of the discussion. So if I have my returns, clothing returns, what kind of material, um, what, what goes into second life or what can be recirculated or and what can be used for collections for the, for the project itself, okay? The second front, the second front um, is looking into the concept of circular, tech, circular economy in the textile industry. So it's basically divided into five topics well, four topics in one er main area. And the idea is to educate and to give more practical examples of what we're saying in the first course in the first course. So the first course, we do this blueprint, you understand exactly how we do things, why do we do it like that, what matters. There are some white papers that you can follow through and they help you with that. But the course two is for people that are interested in this in circularity for the textile industry and either don't know how to do it or don't know where to start and so on. So that's why it's called improving the textile circularity. So we launched two pieces of um, two collections or yeah, collections would be okay. Um, one, this is from H&M and it's a pair of trousers and a jacket, which is unigender, unisex. And the Adidas collection was done through Stella McCartney. Sorry, through Stella McCartney. And you'll see it's also unisex. And it's both, both are done with cotton and both are done thinking about the project. So topic one, we start with circular economy in the textile industry. So you have the main class that is given by Professor um, Kirisin Inimaki uh, and is on designing in a circular economy. And then you have additional classes which are composed by examples of the two twin product projects that we have that is here where in my FI. And you have an overall introduction to the textile industry and the, the industrial designer so that you understand how, how the little bits work. 
Um, this class is given by our, another professor from Alto, uh, Marit Salulainen. And it's an interesting way to start thinking about either if you don't know anything about the textile industry or if you're interested in circular textiles and so on, this is the get-go. You start here and you start understanding what it goes, what it, what it does and what, what it is. So you can go and how examples of how it's been put in practice. So here where and my five, they explain their projects and how they're doing, their, how they're approaching circularity from their perspective. Then topic two is a textile product end of life. And the main class is given by a VTT. So is the Research Institute of Finland. It doesn't stand for it, but it's something like that. And so in the main class, so it's on technology review of recycling, techno, um, of textile recycling. The main class is on technology review. So then you can see what is possible, who is doing that, how it's being used, if it's commercialized or not, and so on. And then the, addi the additional classes are, the first one is a discussion about post-consumer textiles. So the market difficulties, we have Tracy, Kinden, and two, uh, two other professionals who have dealt with post-consumer textiles for a very long time and understand it. Then we have a more engine, a more technical approach to textile recycling. So looking into mechanical, thermal, and chemical. And we will have in the future uh, one on pr production by products, because if you know a little bit of how things work in the textile industry, especially in the production side, so the manufacturing side, you know that there is a lot of byproducts that either get stuck in the machine or is like fluff that fly in the air and so on. Then a topic three is on circular business models. You have the main class by your dearest. And I explained some circular business models from the textile perspective, um, which we work from using, we published a white paper on it. So you can also read the white paper. And then because we're talking about circular businesses, the idea here was to bring these additional classes that have somewhat of a business model in it. So you have the Infina, which is the fiber that we are producing and we are using here in this for the new cotton. Um, you have about textile upcycling and business models to support handcraft. Um, so you have Mendy talking here, um, the, the CEO of Mendy. Then you have how to generate new sustainable textiles beyond recycling which is also very interesting. Um, the secondhand industry, because there has been a lot of polemics, a lot of polemic surrounding secondhand lately, especially because of like fast brands that are getting way too fast that they're filling in all of the secondhand stores and so on. And then circular entrepreneurship, it is more of a interview talk with the people from this University of um, Helsinki University who are doing this circulator. Now they are on 2.0 and they try to, is a pre-incubator for projects that are concerned with circularity. So topic four, this is something that is going to be expanded further into another project, but then you see it. Um, but the main class is, again, on the sustainable secondhand. And from this, this I'm talking about the consumer, their engagement, their participation, their understanding or the wishes for the field and so on. And the additional classes, you have one discussion about how fashion designers can help the transition to sustainable futures. And the one that is not available yet is another researcher from the University of Helsinki. And she's doing this Circular Citizens project. So she's going to bring that for to the platform. Then finally, 
the topic five is not exactly a topic, that's what I meant. We're looking into these other circular considerations, which do not necessarily fit into the other topics, but that are equally important. So for instance, looking into traceability, um, life cycle assessment and the social life cycle assessment, uh, environmental labeling and scaling innovation and infrastructure in the textile industry. So if you think of them all together and you think back on what I said, the work package six proposition is, you get to see how things combined and they work complementary in such a way that after you check the website, after you did the course, or if you, even if you just scan through the course, you will be able to discuss circular ecosystems a lot easier, you will understand it better, and you will have the basis or at least the starting steps for you to go further into it. So like I said, there, we publish in the New Cotton, we publish four white papers. That is something that you, where you can start looking for more information according to what you want to see, to start, to do, and so on. Yeah. So thank you so much for inviting me today. Um, you have my email here, my auto email. Um, as soon as I have my, my Utrecht email, I'll also add it on here. And the QR code for you to access the website without the link. So you can just take a picture and it takes you to the website. So thank you so much. And I'm going to be live here for the questions and answers, Q&A, yeah? Thank you so much.